Racing Hotline from Fox Sports and Speed Channel, Jeff Hammond. Hi, Jeff. Hello, hello. How you guys doing today? Hey, we are doing terrific. Uh, wanted to talk to you about, uh, I guess, the uh, the biggest story of the day has to be uh, after, I, I didn't do my, I, I keep changing this, 11, 12 years in, in the sport, Dodge decides that uh, there isn't a viable alternative for 2013. They left the door open saying that maybe they would return in 14. I guess the question is, if you pull out of the sport for a year, is it even probable that they could come back in 2014 in your mind? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is not the first time something like this has happened. Go back and look at the history of the sport. I mean, they've been in, they've been out, they've been up, they've been down. And I'm not talking about just that particular brand. I'm talking about all of them. Um, Sometimes it just doesn't fit, and I think the one thing you got to look at is where were they really going to go that were going to give them the bang for the buck that they were mm-hmm. looking for. Right. I mean, it's still a huge investment for any manufacturer to be involved in our sport. It seems but you also need to have something to hang your hat on, and you have to tip your hat to Penske Racing, Brad Keselowski. And the entire, you know, Penske organization. I don't want to take anything away from, from what happened AJ Allmendinger, there, but you know, they had a they they were winning. Right. Last year they were winning with Kurt Busch. They were winning with Brad Keselowski. They were, you know, had shots of you know being in the chase and have something that, you know, your marketing department and your fans could kind of get excited about. Where were they going to go in 2013 that we're going to give them that opportunity today? Look around and see who was available today. It's not out there. One of the things and we... The engine deal, I think, was a big hang-up for any team to get off into and where, where were they going to get their engines from. You know, the one thing, Jeff, that really... I guess that's the question is that was there anybody out there? Because Dodge said today in, their, in the news conference that they were still working on the car last week. They were still moving ahead. Was there anybody? Was there a possibility of anybody, and then it just fell through, or was it just a matter of, of it never really coming to fruition? I think when, again, you start looking around at what the options were. And Michael Andretti, um, a great, I think, opportunity and a future team that could possibly come into our sport. But there were hang-ups there with the engine program that were kind of limiting them from making the decision to, to jump into NASCAR and what could Dodge give, offer them. I, I even heard, you know, Richard Petty's name being, you know, bannered around again. Um, but I still contend the biggest hang-up that they, they could not get the engine program up and going and get it away from the Penske organization and be able to move it forward, I think, like they needed to at this point in time. <clears throat> and a lot of people don't understand that, but... We, we don't race month to month or day to day in NASCAR. We, we race year to year. And to be ready for Daytona, these teams are already working on 2013 and getting ready to move things forward. And the teams were not in place and ready to go. It, I think it put them, I think, in an unfair position. And I think they recognize that. And under the circumstances, they felt like maybe this is the best opportunity for them to regroup and move forward. I mean... Dodge has never been known for having a lot of teams under their banner, in recent years in particular. And if they couldn't move their, their organization to a equal partner like they had with Penske, I think that was one of the things they were fearful for. I mean, they, they do a great job around the racetrack of trying to get their brand out there and making it where you could recognize it. I mean, anybody that's watched a nationwide race, could easily recognize the Dodge on the racetrack as far as the manufacturer's concerned. And I think next year they were, you know, getting ready to uh, have an equal uh, recognizable trademark in the Sprint Cup Series so they could move it as far as car sales, you know, uh, to the general public. So all these things come into play, guys. And, And I'm sure it's something that's killing them because, again, they put so much effort into uh, NASCAR racing in recent years and both, you know, the Sprint Cup Series and the trucks as well as the Sprint Cup. So, I don't know. It's just I, I hate to see something like this happen, but uh, hopefully, you know, they'll 
they'll be able to, you know, find the right organization, find the, the right teams uh, that they can put their brand on and move it forward. If it takes a year, well, it just, it's going to take a year to get it done, and I think, you know, it'll, it'll all work out for the betterment of everybody in the long run. We're talking to Jeff. I'm trying to be optimistic about this. I hate it, but I'm trying to be optimistic about it. Yeah, we are too, Jeff. And we are talking to Jeff Hammond from Fox Sport and Speed Channel. Jeff, I, I tend to look back at, at these things in, in a kind of a long, like a historic view, and and I wonder if the the success of the big teams in NASCAR. Uh, haven't somehow led to this. It seems to me like the big teams in IndyCar 15, 20 years ago kind of led to the demise there, too, because the same thing happened there. You had a couple of teams that were really, really dominant, and it ended up building the engines for most of the field. And then you had, uh, you know, Penske became ill more and you know, started no more engines, and Ganassi had some engines they were building. And then NASCAR's gone the same way. We, basically, we have we have four teams that are building the engines for everybody in the Sprint Cup Series now. And if you're not a manufacturer who's hooked up with one of those teams, it it, it seems to me like that's what led to this. And I can't disagree with what your, the points you have there. They're very valid. And it has developed into that. Um, the, the, the plus minus with everything is that when NASCAR – restricted the teams to the number of teams they could that they could have in house. It cost so much to build and develop engines. Uh, they were doing a lot of outsourcing and you know at one time Roush had like five teams and yeah. I think Hendrick would like right. to have gone to five teams. And the only way you can kind of subsidize some of this stuff is to be able to sell engines to other teams. And the the type of, of uh, R and D work that goes into it, development that goes into it, the amount of money that's spent, this has to be spent to make sure the quality control is there. I think all of this has led to where we are today, where you basically have Roush Yates for Ford. You basically have Hendrick and um, ECR as far as Chevrolet. I mean, they're and they're and they're very close together. Toyota is predominantly TRD. Right. So. Uh, it's you know Dodge was was pretty much all Penske, and they, they weren't doing a lot of outsourcing at that. I mean, when I say outsourcing, I'm talking about selling engines um, to other teams, mm-hmm. and I think that's what everybody was trying to get to. And for them to come back, I think they're going to have to find some partners to try to move that uh, forward, and some people that they can kind of like hang their hat on. They're going to be around for a long time. I don't think you're ever going to see Roush make a switch to GM. I don't think you're ever going to see Hendrick make a switch to Ford. So they feel, I think, comfortable, you know, I'm talking about the manufacturers supporting these organizations as they move forward. So this has really turned into a huge business. It's it's turned into a big, uh, if you want to get a good engine, you've got to go to one of these better, you know, one of these manufacturer-supported teams. I mean, that's the other part that's kind of sad about it, that some of the local and smaller engine builders can't get the good quality parts and don't have the knowledge and experience to, to make the horsepower and the durability that a lot of these other teams do, especially the ones that have manufacturer support. We're talking with Jeff Hammond, and, and I think it really kind of shows. Last week on the show, I don't remember exactly, Jeff, why we were talking about it, but I went back and, oh, we were, we were talking about uh, Jeff Gordon's uh, driving in, the, in what was then the Bush Series, and I, I went back to do some research on it, and I looked through the Bush Series entry list from back in 1999, 2000, and there was just a, a huge amount of individual car owners in that series. And it was very similar, I'm sure, in Cup as well. But it just really proves the fact how much this sport has changed over the last 10 to 12 years in that all those independent guys, all those single car, two car guys that were there 10, 12 years ago, no longer can afford to do this on a on a week to week basis. Yeah, and you're exactly right. It, it has changed tremendously. The sport has grown. It's you know we always talk about it as a huge business, and it, it really is. I mean, when you think about there, we're. I mean, we exceed a lot of companies in the United States when you think about having anywhere between 150 on the small side and upwards to 500, 600 employees on the large size when it comes to these race teams. They're so vast, they're so in-depth, they're so structured, basically off a of Wall Street type of a company. It's, uh, 
it's scary. I mean, we it's just you know we have uh, we've evolved, and through that evolution, a lot of good things have happened because people have jobs, but a lot of bad things have happened because other smaller companies are put out of business. So it, it's really um, a very very difficult time, and how you, how you look at our sport and what we need to do next to keep moving it forward and not cost anybody any more jobs and not really put any smaller manufacturers out of business, and it's a very difficult task. Well, Jeff, I've got uh, about two minutes here before we uh, have to break at the top of the hour, but I wanted to ask you about Carl Edwards and uh, the struggles that that team has had. Sitting in 12th in points, uh, Bob Osborne uh, is out as the crew chief due to uh, some medical issues. Um is it too late for Carl Edwards, or is, is there still enough time for him to turn this season around and find his way somehow to get a couple of wins to get into the chase? Well, we were pretty much throwing dirt on Jeff Gordon until Sunday afternoon was concluded and the rains came in and helped him out a little bit, and he got that break on the restart. And now everybody's talking about Jeff Gordon, Jeff Gordon making the chase. Same thing for Carl Edwards. If he could get one win now, it – could change dramatically the landscape. But we're, we've got a whale of a battle between all these guys that have got one win and are up there still close in the points. Any number of things can happen. I think the worst thing can happen for Carl Edwards right now is Jeff Gordon goes to Watkins, Watkins Glen this weekend, gets his second win, mm -hmm. the door will be all but shut on Carl Edwards because that means in the remaining four races, he's got to win half of them. Right even get, be close, and then he's got to be ahead of these guys in the points to make it work. So the clock and everything is really running extremely fast. Road course racing is not his forte. So basically, he's trying to get one win in the remaining four races after this weekend to make that chase. And it's, it's going to be a tall order. But anything can happen. I mean, that's what makes it so compelling. This is not the year that we expected. No as far as people trying to make the chase. Right. And we keep talking so much about wins, how important they are. If this year doesn't make it perfectly clear why you have to get into victory lane and why you need to get into victory lane more than once, it never will. I mean, last year was a great indicator you needed two wins because that's what cost Carl Edwards a championship. Right. One, yeah. one more win. And he would and Tony and he would not have been tied, and Carl would have won. So it just, once again, points out, you got to get the victory lane, guys. And we've got a lot of guys who have had one win, but they need that extra one. They need that one extra one to be able to breathe between now and Richmond. And, and they still may not be where they need to be. I mean, Casey Kane's saying, I need one more win to feel confident that I'm going to make the chase. Yeah. So it's uh, a lot of pressure. And what I love about it, I look at it like the top five in points, they got nothing to lose. They, they can They can – try crazy things, they can go for wins. The guys in the middle, they can't ride because if they do, they can easily get shoved out because one of these guys with one win gets on a, on a roll and jumps up in the points, can push them out, just like Clint Boyer. And the bottom five, basically, when I say that, I'm talking about from 11th down to about 15th or 16th. A lot of those guys have got one win. They need a second one. So we're going to get a chance to watch the top 15, 17 best racers in, in NASCAR go at it as hard as they can from here to Richmond because nobody can ride. I don't care who you are. You can't afford to ride. Yeah. Jeff, real quick, uh, we, we, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't ask you if you thought Dale Jr. could win this championship this year. He's got one win. Can he get, some, can he get enough more wins to, uh, to win the Cup? I think he can because of one reason, one reason only. He believes he can. Yep. And I don't think he's done that in recent years. His attitude is, you know, how do they put that old adage, uh, your ability to achieve or your altitude is only determined by your attitude. Yeah. And right now I think his altitude is out of this universe. I think he's got the best I've seen him have in, a, in just about forever. He believes in himself. He believes in his team. And they're showing what it takes to win a championship, in my opinion. Only problem is he's got several drivers in front of him. Most of those happen to be his teammates that believe the same thing. But mm -hmm. either way, he has a chance. And now he just needs the luck and a few things to go the right way, and he can be a factor. 
and I think he, I think he's going to get at least. I really believe he's going to get at least one more win before the end of the year. But I think two's in his, in the, is really uh, realistic for him this year. I think he, I think he can easily wind up winning three races this year and be a factor in the chase. All right, Jeff. As always, we appreciate you spending some time with us. We'll talk with you again in a few weeks. All right, my man. Take care. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff, Jeff, Hammond. Jeff Hammond, and uh, of course. Jeff uh, from Fox Sports. You see him every weekend on Speed Channel as well, so make sure uh, you tune in for that.